And there's a couple times that we're doing a great job defensively, and then we don't leverage the football and the ball bounces on the outside, and that's all discipline and aiming points. Um, but I was encouraged by, uh, you know, we've had a grueling, a grinding spring football session. And on Wednesday, we strapped it up, and we got after it pretty good. So I saw some tired legs. But again, I just think the overall mentality uh, of our football team, and uh, you win with team chemistry, you win with being disciplined, uh, you win with being a team that doesn't hurt itself. Uh, so I'm encouraged in those areas, and they're going to play exceptionally hard. What we have to find is playmakers. I think everyone in this room sees the same thing I saw is you can't be perfect in today's world of football especially in the SEC you need individuals to step up and make a a, a back shoulder throw to make a back shoulder catch a one-handed gram grab we didn't have uh, balls on the ground defensively we got to force turnovers you know fumbles on the other side I like that we didn't have any fumbles but we have to force turnovers and generate that. So there's a lot of things to work on. But I tell you what, this football team is as eager and willing of any team I've ever coached. Coach, uh, Alton Hill had over 100 yards for us today. Can you just talk about his development from practice yeah. to what he did today? I think that summarizes his spring. As Alden Hill has been a great surprise. Does he still have a long way to go? Yes. Did he leave some yards out there? Yes. Of, you know, cutting off the wrong foot and all that, but he's been an individual who's had great consistency in his performance. And uh, he comes with the mentality to get better each and every day. He's become much more physical. And so I'm really, really encouraged by what I've seen from him. Will you speak to the front seven and see, I mean, penetration tackles for losses? Is that the you know, couple scrimmage and especially today that really seems to jump out? Yeah, and it was great to see on defense. Offensively, sometimes, you know, it may be the back making the wrong cut, the back slipping, uh, some guys not holding on the double team a lot, you know, enough. And that just comes with timing. It comes with chemistry. It comes with repetition. Repetition is the mother to all learning, and that's why this summer is going to be critical moving forward. And how much of a grain of salt do you think with what Corey Vereen has done? Well, last two weeks? Corey Vereen is the type of individual that we want to recruit to come here to Tennessee. Uh, he does well in the classroom. Uh, he's quiet, uh, but he, he, he has a, his, his game speaks. Uh, he has a great motor, and he's going to do nothing but continue to get better and better and better. And if you remember, uh, he's the, my first home visit. And when he went upstairs and got his guitar, he taught himself how to play Rocky Top. So he was one step ahead of the game. But, uh, you know, he's quick twitch. He's explosive. Now he needs to get bigger. He needs to get stronger. Obviously, uh, when we start for August and it's for real about winning football games, his level of play has to increase as well to be able to compete day in and day out at this level. But I'm encouraged by what I've seen. Which in evaluating the offense, how much you, for the summer, how much do you take into consideration in fact, you had some players hurt, some receivers that weren't out there. How do you weigh all that, I guess, yeah. over the summer? Well, you do take that into consideration. And I was out there, and, you know, when you have the amount of receivers that we have out, uh, but you can't make excuses because what if they're out during the season? And that's where individuals step up. And it may sound cliche-ish, but I really, really mean this is the names on the back of the jerseys may change, but the standard and the expectation by position that we expect doesn't change. And it doesn't matter if it's the first, second, third, or fourth individual in there. Our expectation, our standard and performance doesn't change. And that's why we need to continue to recruit. That's why we need to continue to develop depth as we move forward. But if you were playing a real game today, would Justin Worley have been your starting quarterback today? Uh, you know what, I still need more time to address that. Uh, you know, I thought he did some good things. Uh, Nate was kind of in a, in a challenging situation, uh, so you have to take that in. But obviously, when we uh, move forward, uh, the summer will really tell me a lot of where we're at. With, with Nathan, obviously, he's, you know, guys can't hit him, and that maybe takes away from his running ability. Has he maybe come to you at all this spring and been like, hey, coach, let me be live? How no, him I have not seen any frustration. He did get excited the one day we did make him live. But, you know, he, he's been typical of of our entire football team. Just tell me what to do, coach, and we'll do it. And uh, so that's why I'm encouraged by what I see with this team. But what you said of Brian Randolph today, things just – seem to look more solid. I know there was yeah. out today, but things just seem to look more solid on the back end. Of the you know, well, Brian's 
slowly starting to work his way back, you know, into really being in game shape. And he's been, you know, he's still hampered a little bit from the recovery of his injury, but it was very encouraging for me to see his play. I thought he really elevated his play today, and we're going to need that, uh, obviously, down the stretch here in, in, in the summer and in, uh, in the fall. Well, I look on the roster and see looks like quite a bit of local players. Does it matter a whole lot? Do they get to know each other pretty quickly as the season starts? Well, they, we do so much team building stuff. I, I think it does help, though, when you're a local player, uh, when you're a player from the state of Tennessee or even Atlanta's two and a half hours away, is that it's unique for the parents because they really develop a special chemistry uh, with the rest of the players on the team because they bring them over for barbecues and all that. And that's, that's one of the great things of our proximity of where we're located is we're able to recruit and go in areas of vicinity of two and a half, three hours. And I think that's really rewarding for the parents. But you had a couple of guest play pickers, some of those kids. Uh from Duck Dynasty. Is that something that, was that your idea? Is that something you've done in the past? And we have done in the past. And again, everything we want to do, especially in events like this, is fan friendly. And I think it's a way to have fun, keep your serious side, but also a way to say thank you for your support. And uh, those young people, those, those little kids will remember that the rest of their life. And it's all about growing up uh, with an affinity for the University of Tennessee, and that just helps that process. There's been a lot of guys on the team that you said have improved a great deal over the past month, but what made uh, Matt Crowder and Dante Sapp stand out as the, the winners on the side of the Good question. I think, uh, first of all, high level of consistency. Uh, they didn't miss one rep in practice. Uh, you know, Mac has been hurt. He's played through, you know, he hurt his thumb and he's a center and he didn't say anything. And they didn't miss one rep. Uh, they have had a very high level of consistency, but they progressively got better from practice one all the way to practice 14, and they, they were very deserving. Coach, as you sort of have end of spring meetings with your guys, what's the, the biggest thing you'll challenge your quarterbacks to, to do over the, the rest of spring and throughout summer? Everything, um, everything needs to be w worked on. You know, taking ownership in our receivers and tight ends and running backs and developing that trust and that timing. Overall leadership, overall command presence, you know, being the alpha male, uh, understanding that and uh, growing their leadership, the overall knowledge of the game, you know, letting the game slow down a little bit as it comes to them. Alpha male is a term you use a lot. Do you feel like that's something your quarterback kind of has to have or has to develop? Critical. You know, name me a... a Name me a good football team or a great football team whose quarterback wasn't a great leader. And usually your average to below average football teams, your quarterback brings no leadership value. And everything is that quarterback is the coach on the field. The quarterback sets the temperament for the entire football program, not just the offense. Butch, mindful of your previous stops, is there anything in any way that you can prepare for the scrutiny, the interest, and the curiosity that is exhibited here today about you and your program? Well, I think that's what makes this job special. I think, uh, you know, when you look at the media coverage that we have here in, at Tennessee, it's very important. I think it's evident by the amount of people in this room. I think it's evident by 61,000 plus. But I've said it is I think Cincinnati really prepared me for this opportunity uh, to be in a pro market. Um, in the scrutiny that's there. That 4-8 and eight season was probably the hardest thing I've ever endured in my life. And I think that prepared me a lot of times when you're suffering adversity. They say adversity is if it's the greatest life lesson, how come nobody wants to experience it? Uh, so I think that helped me uh, prepare, and, and I, I love it. You know, as a football coach, you want to coach, and as a player, as a recruit, whatever it is, you want to play in a program that's important. And obviously the magnitude of Tennessee football is nationwide. Talk about the, the need for playmakers. You said everybody here could kind of see it, that the, the guys just making plays is what this program needs. How much of that can change in one summer? I mean, how much is realistic to expect? Well, I think we do have some playmakers, I, I believe. You know, I think Alton Howard can be a playmaker. I think Devin Young can be a playmaker. I think Ray John Neal, in his own way, can be a playmaker. You know, I, I think we have some playmakers. Alden Hill can be a playmaker. But it's just a, a level of consistency. You know, uh, we need to get back some of the wideouts. You know, they can't miss valuable reps. But we have to have the ability to spit a 
five yard throw out and turn it into a 25 yard gain. And uh, the only way you do it is, especially from our slot receivers. That slot receiver, every time we've had success in our offense, our slot receivers have been dominant. You look at Antonio Brown, three years at Central Michigan, who's now at the Pittsburgh Steelers, he had 100 plus receptions each year. You know, you look at Anthony McClung at Cincinnati, you can go round and round. You know, and that's what we need from Devron, that's what we need from Alton, and they have to play themselves in the great physical shape. And you do that by really demanding of yourself each and every day. Coach, from the outside looking in, seeing that Dan McCullers probably got pushed harder than maybe anybody could <laughs> Yes, you are right. You know what? I was really encouraged by Dan McCullers today. And you have. I think we probably pushed him the hardest because we need him to be a dominating defensive tackle. We need him. And he has that ability, but we have to get his motor running on every snap. And again, it's that endurance. You know, what is what is it when it's fourth and one and it's the seventh play of the drive? You know, Daniel McCullers can be a playmaker. You know, you don't have to be a playmaker just offensively. We need those defensively, too. And I was really encouraged by his play. He's been attentive in all meetings. He's been willing. He wants to be coached. And I think he's very blessed to be coached by Steve Stripling, who I feel is the best defensive coach in the country. I felt that for a long way. And they're really listening to the coaching that's being done. Coach, Coach Bajakian said earlier in the week that I guess only about 50% of the offense was installed during spring ball. Where does that put you going into fall camp? Are you behind where you wanted to be? Are you kind of right on schedule? I think we're right on schedule. I think too much is made of scheme. It's all about execution. You know, we're going to be an execution-based offense, defense, and special teams. And why would you even put more stuff in if your players aren't executing it at a high level? You know, we have to be able to complete the hitch. We need to be able to complete the three-step slant before we can graduate. And uh, I, I thought that uh, at the end of spring we started to be more consistent, but we have to master the, the, the tools of the trade, the fundamentals, the small details. You know, you look at the offense that don't execute, they probably have a high volume and they never master anything. They don't own anything. When we, when it's fourth and three and the game's on the line, whether it's Austin P, whether it's Oregon, whether it's Florida, whether it's Georgia, it doesn't matter. When we call that football play, our players have to have a high level of confidence that they've repped it over and over and over again. And it doesn't matter what the coverage is, they're going to execute it. Coach, can you tell me a little about uh, Josh Dobbs and how he fits into your system and what he will, uh, what his arrival will mean for this quarterback battle? Well, I think, you know, obviously Joshua Dobbs coming in, but also Riley Ferguson as well. You know, uh, we have two very outstanding young men coming in. I think that's going to add to the overall quarterback competition, uh, you know, and Charlie High as well. But, uh, you know, I think the big thing is, is that we're still behind in our scholarship numbers there. And we always talk, you know, we just talked about the quarterback sets the temperament of your program. Anything else, guys? All right. Thank All right. you. Thanks, Coach.